Chris, always a pleasure speaking to you. Happy New Year. Talk us through this partnership with 888 Poker. Well, yeah, something I guess not everyone knows uh, about me is that I am a, an avid poker player. And, um, yeah, I've been I've being picked up now by 888 Poker. Um, I'm an ambassador now. They're going to be flying me out to different tournaments. I'm going to be playing tournaments online, going to... Um, going to casinos and playing with the fans um, it's it's definitely a passion of mine and uh, yeah I'm, I'm very excited when it comes to the boxing how have you found the the constant postponements you've seemed to have with this fight against Liam Williams yeah it's it's not the dream I'm not gonna lie having you know having a pushback from December to January now January to February um, it's tough you know and you've, and you've got to make the adjustments in, in your training and you know, you don't want to peak too too early, and you know, wait, and it's you know, it's it's a real, it's an ordeal for sure. But you know, it's it's one of those things that can't really, it can't be helped. You know, what can you do if if COVID is a real thing? You know, um, regardless, I will be ready uh, for February when the fight happens, and uh, you know, I'm fully prepared. At the moment, there's not fans allowed in, in stadiums in Wales. How keen are you to ensure that, that you do fight on the 5th of February and you do fight in front of a crowd? Yeah, I mean, I, I did the whole crowdless uh, fight. I did that last year. And um, I'm not going to say I didn't enjoy it, but it, it definitely can't. It doesn't come close to fighting in front of a crowd, whether they're a hostile crowd or they're, or they're with you. Either way, you, you you want you want people there, you know. It's, it's it just it takes a lot of the fun and the uh, the atmosphere out of out of the whole occasion uh, when if you don't have a crowd there. So um, you know it's important that we get a crowd and it's important that the fight happens in February. When it comes to Liam Williams, he's made a, a bit of a surprise change in trainer, moving over to Adam Booth. What have you made of that so close to this fight? Nothing's going to save him from what's coming. Absolutely nothing. You've worked with Adam Booth. What will Adam be looking to do with him? What, what sort of fight are you expecting Adam to try and create for this fight? You know, Adam will have his strategies, his game plans, what he thinks is going to work against me from what he's seen in the past. Um, but Liam Williams is not, uh, you know, he's not capable of, 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 of changing what he is. Um, you know, he's an ABC fighter. Um, he comes forward. You know, he he throws he throws he throws his shots. You know, and he gets hit. That's what he is, and that's not going to change. We spoke at the end of last year, and you said, "I guarantee you now, 2022, I have a world title round my round my round my waist." You said that's what's going to happen. You're still confident that's the case. Hundred um, <laughs> percent. COVID's trying its best to get in the way of that, but um, you know this fight will happen with Liam Williams, and after that, I will be fighting for a world title. So, yes, that is still 100% the goal, and um, and, I, and I achieve my goals when I say I will. How was Dubai with AJ? Dubai was great. It's awesome training out there. Uh, it was great being around AJ. We spent a lot of time together, training together, going out, and um, you know he's in great shape. And yeah, having him watch me watch me work out and and uh, you know, giving each other chip tips, it's uh, you know it was a great thing. And what's his mindset? Having spent time with him, have you got a different feel towards what's going to happen in the rematch from 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 being in such close quarters with him? Listen, my, he, the the man's still hungry. You know, all that he's done, all the money he's made, um, he's still he's still as hungry as ever. He still wants it. He still wants to be better. You know, he still wants to improve. Um, and he wants that win. You know, he wants to avenge that loss, 100%. So, uh, and I and I don't see why he can't do it. Um, he will have to change his game plan. He knows that. Um, but you know, as he showed in in the Ruiz in the in the Ruiz rematch, you know, he's more than capable of of switching things up and evolving as a fighter. So I'm I'm confident. I know we're limited on time, so I've got a few more questions for you. One was in regards to something which Kala tweeted at the end of last year, and he said, you bank it against Ben, the next generation, it will happen. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> um, listen, that, you know, if that fight was ever to happen, it won't be for a, a good few years. 
um, you know, he's he is still on the up and up. You know, he's still coming up in the game. He's still, you know, fairly green. You know, I'm, I, I'm, I guess you could call me a veteran in the game at, at this stage of my career. Um, and we, you know, we're two different weight classes. You know, he's still growing. You know, he's he's still, you know, he's he could still probably come up a weight class or two. Um, the fight would have to be at a catch weight. But, you know, we're at two completely different stages in our careers. I'm looking for world titles at middleweight, and he's nowhere near any of that. So, um, you know, like I said, that fight, if it was to happen, would be, you know, it's a, it's a long way off. A couple more. I spoke to Cali yesterday about the Bradis tattoo on his leg of, of Jake Paul. What do you make of that, the fact you've got this cruiserweight king calling out Jake Paul? I didn't know that until you just told me. Um, if he's got a genuine tattoo of Jake Paul on him, then that is unforgivable and uh yeah that's yeah that's that's heartbreaking to hear if he's really done that and final one we're doing a bit of a debate about the greatest boxers in british history history but we're looking at the 21st century who do you think is the best boxer since 2000 and why i i can't i can't answer that question i'm not going to pick one guy who will be the contenders you know the best boxer the best boxer would pr probably have to be Floyd Mayweather. British. Oh, British. Um, no, no, I'm not. I'm not going to go there. There's, there's, there's too many names. There's too much controversy, and you know, there's all these pound for pounds, and you know, the best ever's and all that. I don't really believe in all that. You know, on any given night, anyone can be great. Um, British boxing is, is 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 booming right now. It's the new golden era. There's so many great fighters out there, um, and I'm, I'm I'm just privileged to be a part of that, part of the scene at, at this current moment in time. Um, and you know, hopefully, at the end of my career, I will be considered one of the greats in British boxing. And the very very final one. We're here at 888 po Poker, and you've spoken before about some of the bets you've placed and that bet you placed last year when it came to Billy Joe Saunders. When it comes to a bet this year in the world of boxing, what are you going to put your money on? Chris Eubank Jr. to be world champion by the end of 2022.